Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to the OJ Simpson chase. Now, this case is something that I know a little bit about. I mean, everyone's no, like everyone's heard of this case, right? It's probably top three most well-known court like cases, like whether you get the footage of the glove that doesn't fit or just the case itself, because obviously he was... I'm, I'm going to assume he was the top guy in the NFL. Like He was, I guess, like... I don't know what position he was, but he was the Tom Brady in terms of how well known he was of his era or he well maybe tom brady was the oj simpson tom brady is the oj simpson of his, of his era because i don't know i don't know what position oj simpson was but i'm just saying that like, he was a star like a, a big star well known i don't know if this case happened during his career or if it was after but i just know yeah it was it's crazy he it was involving his family it's brutal and this is the chase of O.J. Simpson. I don't know what this is to do with. I mean, did he go missing for ages or what? I don't really know. But we're going to see. We're going to learn about what this is about. Obviously, he did pass away recently. Oh, no. Anyway, um, yeah, we're going to check this out and see. Because I don't know what sort of stuff this will go into. Again, this is the chase. It's not the case. It's the chase. So, I guess after the case happened, maybe he went missing for a long time. So I remember maybe like four years ago he started posting again on like his Twitter and it was like of him playing golf and before that I hadn't really seen him about I didn't know if he was in prison or what but the whole thing was he never got sentenced because of the, the glove stuff obviously it's not because of the glove stuff but that's just like the case there you know from that case he got away with it when you sort of see this footage and you're like how has that happened then but maybe yeah maybe for like 20 30 40 years he just went away from everything just to live his own life but i don't really know we're gonna see and learn about what this is to do with and that's pretty much it links are also in the description to my patreon we can see reactions that i can't post to youtube and yeah let's jump into this on the morning of june 17 1994 news reporters from all over los angeles raised to one specific location pointing their so 1994 see, that's like 30 years ago and he was 76 when he passed away. So he would have been 46 when this happened. So this was after his playing career. Okay, so we've got that sorted out already. Your cameras to capture a very brief moment. A moment that will probably be only a few seconds long. The location is the LAPD headquarters in downtown Los Angeles. And at around 11 a.m., over 1,000 journalists are gathered at the entrance. The moment they want to capture is the perp walk of O.J. Simpson, who any minute from now will be placed in handcuffs right here. O.J. Simpson. In the mid-90s, this was about as big a media spectacle as one can imagine. Perhaps the greatest running back of all time. Running back. O.J. Simpson was known as one of the most successful football players of all time. And besides his football career, he had made a name for himself as a media personality, appearing as a sports commentator, movie actor, and so he was everything. He was just that guy. It's not the same sport, but you see how like The Rock, obviously he was in WWE and he still returns sometimes, but he's like this massive movie star. People love him. I feel like he's one of those people that could probably become the US president if over time he built like a, um, I guess like a, I don't know, a manifesto or whatever. Is that what I'm trying to say? He just built a sort of a thing over time where he got loads of people to support him. He seems like he's this sort of level. Like he was just known by everyone. In several commercials. Pioneers New Country Spicy Chicken. And not only would he be placed in custody, it would also be for one of the most serious crimes imaginable. As O.J. Simpson was the main suspect in a double homicide investigation. Five days earlier in the Brentwood area of Los Angeles, two dead bodies were found. The victims were Nicole Brown and Ron Goldman, murdered in front of Brown's apartment. Nicole was O.J. Simpson's ex-wife. Oh, I thought it was his family. I didn't even know this then. For many years had been harassed by her former partner, both during the marriage as well as afterwards. O.J. is said to have regularly stalked her as well as been violent towards her. Damn. The second victim, Ron Goldman, was a friend of Brown's, and he just happened to be at Brown's apartment that night to drop off something she had forgotten. Traces of a perpetrator's blood were discovered at the crime scene, 
and this evidence was incriminating OJ, who became the main suspect. Based on this evidence, the police decided to arrest O.J. Simpson. The Los Angeles County District Attorney has just filed murder charges against Orenthal James O.J. Simpson. Due to his fame and previous cooperation with the police, it was assumed that there was no risk of an escape. After all, a famous celebrity like that wouldn't go on the run, they thought. And so, an agreement between the police and OJ's lawyers was made, allowing him to turn himself in at the police station, leading to this crowd of reporters. But this is where things go differently. Time and time passes, and after more than two hours, the reporters are suddenly asked to come inside the building. Not knowing why, they are stunned to hear the police statement. The Los Angeles Police Department right now is actively searching for Mr. Simpson. Oh, wow. Okay, so I don't know much about this at all in this case. I initially thought it was to do with his family. I assume maybe that's like the mum of his kids. I, don't, I mean, I don't even know if he has kids, but I assume that's probably the mother of his kids that he had beforehand that he killed and then obviously the friend. He went missing. He didn't go. He didn't go. Oh, jeez. Okay, so he actually he went missing before his whole court case as well. Damn. With OJ not showing up, police started heading his way. OJ Simpson had spent the night and morning in the San Fernando Valley at the house of lawyer Robert Kardashian, with whom he maintained a long friendship. In addition to Simpson's legal team, there were also several doctors present, as well as Al Collings, OJ's former football teammate and a childhood friend. When the police officers arrived, they first met OJ's lawyers, who were agreeing to OJ coming down to be arrested. We greeted them. They were very polite and courteous. They told us that they would follow normal procedure handcuff OJ and take him to the police station and they agreed that we would be able to accompany him. At that time it was suggested that Dr. Fairstein go up and tell him that he was going to be transported in handcuffs into custody. It was at that time when Dr. Fairstein went in the room to alert him that we discovered for the first time that OJ was not present. <laughs> wow. Al Callings was not present. Oh, mud. With the two men gone, the only thing that was found in the room were three letters that OJ left behind, <clears throat> which to most people seemed to indicate that he was planning on taking his own life. One letter was addressed to his children, the other to his mother, and one to the general public a letter which Robert Kardashian read aloud to reporters only a few hours later. I think of my life and feel I've done most of the right things. So why do I end up like this? I can't go on. One of the most famous personalities in the city and the country has disappeared. And almost at the same time as the police, thousands of reporters became aware of it and head on a search. It is the beginning of a race of who can track down OJ Simpson first. What no one knows at this point is that OJ is not hiding in any home, but is on the road. At this time, OJ is sitting in the passenger seat of a white Ford Bronco, while Cowlings, who owns the car, is driving, heading down south on the 405 freeway. The destination they picked is the Ascension Cemetery, located in Orange County, a place where the two of them had been to only a few hours earlier. A cemetery. On June 16, the day before this escape, the funeral of Nicole Brown Simpson took place right here. Oh, okay. Even though there were already increasing doubts about OJ's innocence at the time, as the ex-husband of the victim, he attended the memorial service. The mourning ex-husband, the grieving father, the God, focus damn. of a murder investigation. This is so dark. I mean, obviously it's dark. It's involving the deaths of innocent people. But this is just getting darker, man. 
So he's turned up to her funeral day before he's then being sent. I'm not sentenced, but whatever's happening, he's, they're trying to get him. But the first stages of him getting arrested or whatever. Not sentenced. There you go. He was getting arrested, not sentenced. The day after. Now, a day later, OJ wanted to go back to her grave, presumably to harm himself right there. When the two arrive at the cemetery, they realize that it will not be possible to go to the gravesite without being recognized. Did you go to her grave? Yes. Well, we never made it there because there was a police car blocking the entrance. And they wouldn't let you in? Well, AC saw him and uh, avoided going in. Unsure on what to do next, Cowlings parks the car near the cemetery. According to his own statement, OJ wanted to wait for the police to leave so he could still go to the grave. While they were waiting, they turn on the radio, and they notice that there are reports on almost all frequencies about a large-scale search for the two. Presumably, in order not to be recognized, OJ now moves from the passenger seat to the back seat and lies down. And he instructs Cowlings to drive back up north, heading to his house, oh. with the goal of meeting his mother there. Knowing that there is an active manhunt for him, O.J. Simpson then decides to call the police himself, who immediately traced the call to determine where it's coming from. The signal appears to originate near the El Toro Y interchange. All units of stations for station 18 per LAPD. Attempt to locate 187 suspect. Southbound 5 freeway from El Toro at 1646 hours. In a white 1993 Ford Bronco possible plate. 3 Delta Hotel Yankee 503. With this information, it doesn't take long until the first police car spots the vehicle. 241, I'm behind it. Occupied by a male black. Northbound 5, north of Red Hill. Journalists all across LA were listening into police radio, and soon the first news chopper finds the chase and goes live on air. doesn't stop, he also doesn't try to outrun the police, traveling a mere 30 miles per hour. Due to the slow speed of the chase and the fact that no new cars can catch up from behind the police, the traffic around the Bronco drops significantly. They seem to have cleared the freeway pretty much like they do when you see a presidential motorcade. However, things are completely different in the airspace over the highway, where more than nine different news helicopters are now broadcasting the chase Jesus. to homes and sports bars all across the nation. As Cowlings continues to follow the highway, he then calls 911, trying to negotiate with the police. 911, what are you reporting? This is, this is AC. I have OJ in the car. Okay, where are you? Please, I'm coming up to 5 freeway. Okay. Right now, we all, we all okay, but you gotta tell the police that this is back off. He's still alive, but he got a gun to his head. What, what's your name? My name is AC. You know who I am, goddammit. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty, sir, hold on just a moment. <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Oh. Hello? The information that OJ is armed increases the danger. Three channel 7104 cop could not see in the window of the vehicle. And the LAPD tries to take advantage of the fact that there are cameras pointed at the car from nearly all directions, cooperating with the news choppers to try to get a better look at the situation. Okay, what we're doing is we've been, uh, we've asked the police department, tr they can't see through the windows, and we're allowed to shoot a picture through the windows to see if indeed he is back there with the gun. Meanwhile, the Bronco leaves Interstate 5 and turns onto California State Route 91, heading west. Increasingly, onlookers are flocking to the side of the road, watching what? the chase and... That's so wild, people are literally just getting out of their cars and looking. Person. 
Years earlier, OJ was part of a well-known advertising campaign for the car rental company Hertz, appearing in ads where he runs through an airport terminal while being cheered on by onlookers. <laughs> now, many are shouting this slogan, Go OJ Go, no to the white Ford Bronco as it races past them, followed by the police. They're cheering him! The chase has the entire country hold its breath. As it is Friday evening, with several major sporting events taking place, TV viewership is already quite high. Now, OJ's chase catapults this to a completely new level. Sports broadcasts were either paused completely or relegated to a small frame at the edge of the screen. Wow. Some sports commentators who personally knew OJ even took the opportunity to appeal to him directly, encouraging him to give up. No game on a sports field could surpass the excitement of what was currently taking place on the streets of Los Angeles. For comparison, the most watched television event of that year, 1994, was the Super Bowl in January with 90 million viewers, which actually was the third most viewed Super Bowl ever at the time. But the OJ chase sets a new record. If you take the various broadcasts together, 95 million Americans are watching this chase. Bloody hell. Looking at history, this means it was the sixth most watched broadcast on US television till that point. Damn. Which is especially remarkable considering that almost all other events on this list were announced and advertised weeks and months prior, while this event happened on the spot. Meanwhile, the white Ford Bronco turns again and switches to Interstate 405, now heading further north. Knowing that OJ is using his cell phone while driving, LAPD detective Tom Lang remembers that he had written down OJ's number and decides to call it. To his surprise, OJ picks up. Let me get to my house. Okay, okay we're gonna do this. I swear to you, I'll give you what I, I'll you, give you me, I'll give you my whole body. Uh, okay. I just need to get to my house. Okay. I'm okay. Gonna we're gonna do that. Just throw the gun out the window. I can't do that. We're not gonna bother you. We're gonna let you go up there. Just throw it out the window, please. You're scaring everybody. OJ, you there? As OJ and Cowlings approach the Brentwood neighborhood where OJ's house is located, the car leaves the freeway and makes its way through the more narrow streets. On the phone, Lang tries to calm down a dangerous O.J. Simpson, repeatedly mentioning his children and his family. You're listening to me, I know you, and you're thinking about your kids right now, aren't you? Aren't you? Uh, They're thinking about you. They're thinking about you. Uh, so is your mother. Your mother loves you. I'm the only one that deserves. No, you don't deserve that. Hurt. You do not deserve to get hurt. You do uh, not deserve to get hurt. Don't do this. All I did was love Nicole. That's all I did was love her. I understand. I love everybody. I right. tried to show everybody my whole life that I love everybody. We know that. And everybody loves you. Lang increasingly flatters the celebrity and makes it about OJ himself, calling him by his football nickname to choose. Juice, don't give in now. You've been a man all your life. You're admired, don't give it up. At 7.57 p.m., still unstopped by the police, the Ford Bronco arrives at OJ's house. Cowlings pulls into the driveway and parks. As they come to a stop, Jason, OJ's son, runs straight towards the car, seemingly oh, wow. shouting through the driver's window. Right, who is that out there? I just toss it, yes. The police officers who were in the house were worried that this could escalate the situation, and they step in to lead Jason away from the car. On the call audio, you can now hear Cowlings as he is trying to stop OJ from harming himself. If there is anyone at this point who still doubts that the extremely cautious approach by the police throughout this chase is atypical to how LAPD operated at that time, what happens next will make it clear. 
Over a period of 15 minutes, negotiations between the car and police take place. Occasionally, Cowlings even steps out of the car, shouting at officers who seem to approach them. Ultimately, they come to an agreement. OJ will surrender himself, but on his own terms. He leaves the car and is allowed to go into the house, where his lawyers also arrive. Here, OJ is allowed to drink a glass of orange juice and have a phone call with his mother. Only then, he is being handcuffed and placed into a police car, heading to the LAPD Parker Center to be placed in custody. The chase has come to an end. Damn, man. I didn't know all of this happened. At Besides all. Besides working on this story, I recently spent a lot of my time crafting... Well, there we go. This is just the OJ Simpson chase that I didn't even know happened. I mean, I probably did know this before, but I just couldn't really have it. I couldn't remember it. At least OJ can now rest well knowing that the killer is dead. Let me know a Neo drop in just two days. Too good. OJ drinking OJ before getting arrested is hilarious. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, f let me just search this up. Did OJ Simpson... Because he won the case, right? Like, this is known that he won the case. But I'm wondering how after... What? How after all of this... Like, the chase and stuff. How he didn't get sentenced. He was tried and acquitted for the murders of his ex-wife, Nicole, and her friend, Ronald Goldman. The two were stabbed to death. Um, the murder trial spanned eight months. That's mad. So, well, what did he do, like, years after? Did he just move somewhere? Where did O.J. Simpson live after trial? He served nine years in a Nevada prison. Oh, so he did serve time in a prison. What? It's where he played golf, sometimes posed for selfies with those still enamored with his celebrity he died with. So, he what did he get? So I'm going to assume it's to do with the case, but then, in oh, in 2007, Simpson was arrested in Las Vegas, Nevada, charged with armed robbery and kidnapping. <laughs> what? How the hell has... Oh my god, this guy, man. <laughs> what the fuck? So he was, he was arrested for something completely different. Why is he arrest? Why is he, like, doing armed robberies and kidnapping people? when he's probably i'm assuming at this point still got all the money all the assets that he had before what a strange man you know what fair enough that's probably you got to be crazy to become the top top level athlete but that's a whole different level of crazy but um yeah let me know your thoughts on this this is a fascinating case obviously this is just the chase this doesn't focus on the whole thing but it is wild and it makes you realize how how like like understandable as to how this became so well known obviously instantaneous instantly it became well known it wasn't like a long process that over time it, it became more well known it was just instantly it was everyone was interested and over the years it's still seen you know you see you still see footage of it and all that sort of stuff but that's it let me know your thoughts and until next time like subscribe and peace